Deuteronomy chapter 6. And uh, so far, what we've learned is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Today's word is nephesh, which means soul. And as with so many Hebrew words, as you're probably finding out by now if you've been following us a little bit, the, um, this word can mean soul, but it can also mean uh, something more than that, or it can mean other things in addition to, to soul, the way we think of it. Um, so for instance, on the most literal level, nephesh means something like neck or throat. Um, but generally it's used as sort of more metaphorically to mean the, the life or the essence of a person. And this seems kind of strange, like why would you, why would you say neck when you mean life? But if you think about it, we kind of have an expression like that in English where we might say, oh, you know, he really saved my neck today, uh, right? What we mean is they really saved my life today uh, or really saved me today, like who I am, me as, uh, as an individual. And so, um, so maybe it's not, not that strange to think about neck as meaning, as meaning life. You know, a place we can find, a good, I think, a good example of this in, uh, elsewhere in the Bible is if we look at the story of Jonah. In, uh, if we remember the story of Jonah, right, he's, he's been called by God to go, uh, to go do something, and he runs away because he's afraid to do it, or unwilling to do it. And he's on a boat, and a great storm sort of blows up in the sea, and the, the sailors on the boat, they throw him off to try to, uh, try to save themselves because they realize that, that he's the reason the storm is happening. And he's sinking down in the water. And in Jonah chapter two, we find that as he's sinking, there's this, there's this poem that he sort of, uh, that he sort of uh, uh, utters, or at least is recorded here in Jonah chapter two, talking about how, um, how he's in distress. And what we find in chapter two, verse five, uh, it says, Jonah says, the waters closed in over me to take my life. The deep surrounded me. So he's going down in the water. When you look at the Hebrew, what he literally says is, the waters closed uh, or surrounded me until my neck. And so I think what the image is, until my nephesh, until my neck. And so what I think it, that means is, it's like imagining the waters coming up to your neck, right? And you're sort of beginning to drown. And then the next part where he says, the, the deep surrounded me, the waters around, the weeds were wrapped around my head at the roots of the mountains. And so he's sort of going underwater. The water's passed up his neck and is going over his head and he's afraid he's going to die. And of course, God comes and, and, and rescues him. But you see, so you see there, there's really kind of literal usage of the word nephesh to mean neck. Um, but, you know, so it means neck, but life as sort of metaphorically by extension. But um, also if we look at the creation story in Genesis, we look back, to Genesis chapter one, uh, we'll see another way that, that nephesh is often used. And so uh, if we look at Genesis chapter one, verse 20, God has created, uh, has created light and darkness and has created land and, and the water. And uh, in verse 20, it says, and God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures. And that word living creatures in Hebrew is nephesh chaya, which means um, sort of life, sort of living beings. And so nephesh kind of means a being. So the essence of just what it means to be alive, to be a being, a uh, nephesh chaya. And so, yeah, so neck, life, and then just essence of, of, of who we are. So when we think about all those meanings, we look back at, uh, at the Shema, say to love, to love the Lord your God with all your soul, with all your nephesh. It means to, uh, kind of to love the Lord with all your with all your. Um, all your life, the entirety of your life, and all your essence, like who you are, what makes you, you. What I find so incredible about that is the idea that right, we're being asked, commanded even, to love the Lord, the God, with, with who we really are, and not who we think we're supposed to be or who we wish we'd like to be, but to love the Lord, our God, with everything that we are that makes us, us. And for me, that's very liberating, and it, I think it takes away um, the possibility of, of, of shame, of having to, to, uh, to, to be sorry or having to um, think we can't come before God with who we really are because uh, we can, because we are to love the Lord, our God, with all our nephesh, with all our essence, our life, who we really are. Well, join us again tomorrow as we learn uh, the next word in the Shema.